Okay, we're going to look at some Fourier transform examples and we're going to consider this function, which is the rect function, and the Fourier transform is the sink. And we know that uh, we know that this is a pair. And here's a plot of the pair. The rect function is the square and the sink in the frequency domain. We also know uh, that the Fourier transform of a sink in the time domain is a rect in the frequency domain. And we know that because of the duality property. Okay, and uh, let's notice here that the height of this is 1 and the height of this is also 1 uh, and the crossing point here is 2 pi. Uh, the crossing point here is 1 and the uh, width here is of width uh, from minus pi to pi. So we've got these functions. This is xt and this is yt. Now we're going to consider some typical sorts of examples. So let's consider an example where we're asked to plot the Fourier transform of x of 3t. So what's that uh, going to look like? Well, I think a good way to think about this is to actually write down what that is as a function. Let's make up a zt, which equals x of 3t. And as soon as we think of it like that, hopefully you can see that this is a compression in the time domain. Because whatever is happening at t for z, we look in here, and the thing in the brackets for the x is three times that. So whatever happens at t here is the same thing that's happening at three times t in x. So we're taking x and we're compressing it because we're, we're taking what happens at 3t and making it happen at t. So this is a compression in the time domain uh, and therefore it's an expansion in the frequency domain. So we don't, to plot the Fourier transform, we don't need to do any mathematical calculations. We can immediately uh, use the property from the Fourier transform tables that the Fourier transform of f of at when you are uh, having this effect on time in your transform, the Fourier transform of that we know from the tables is 1 on mod of a times the Fourier transform at omega divided by a. So if we're multiplying the time by a, we're divided by the frequency by a. Uh, so therefore a compression in the time is an expansion in the frequency uh, and you've got this normalization factor. So straight away we can plot this function here. We take this function, this is the Fourier transform of x, and we, uh, because we have contracted it in the time domain, therefore we have expanded it in the frequency domain. So the first crossing point is 6 pi, because in our case the factor is 3. So we take 2 pi goes up to 6 pi, and the amplitude gets reduced by a factor of 3, 1 on a, because in our case a equals 3, this was 1. So we can immediately plot that. You don't need to calculate it, you just use that from the table. Okay, what if we were asked about something to do with function y, a very similar one. Let's say we were asked to plot the Fourier transform of y, which is 0.01, y of 0.01 times time. So just as this was a contraction, this is an expansion. Again, if I write z of t equals y of 0.01 of t, we can see that whatever's happening at t in z is, is the thing that happened at one hundredth of t in y. So therefore we're expanding out y when we're looking at z. Okay, so expanding out y is going to be when we're expanding in the time domain, we are compressing in the frequency domain. And so straight away using the same formula there, we can see if we look at what the, the function was, this was our function here for the function y. Uh, y2 was the sink in the, in the time and a square erect in the frequency. So now we're taking this and because we were expanding it out, we are now in time, we're contracting it in frequency and don't forget the scaling factor. So we can again draw this straight down just simply using the lookup tables. We don't have to do any mathematics. Okay, so you get a contraction in the frequency domain uh, by dividing by 100 and you get uh, the, um, the a is 0 0.01, so 1 over a is 100. The amplitude has gone up. Okay, so those uh, are just simply from using the tables. So what about, what else can we use the tables for? Well, here's another one. Let's say we were asked for yt times e to the j 10t, if we were asked to plot this. 
Again, we know some properties from our tables, so let's use one of those, let's think about one of those properties when you're multiplying. Uh, let's look at this function here, the e to the j uh, 10t. Well, there's a property where e to the j omega naught t, if that's a time domain function, that has a Fourier transform of 2 pi delta omega minus omega naught. That's just directly from the Fourier transform tables. So we know that what we're doing here is we are, uh, there's another property also, we are multiplying in the time domain, so we are convolving in the frequency domain. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be convolving the Fourier transform of y with the Fourier transform of this, and we just worked out that's a delta function. And when you convolve something with the delta function, it's very simple, it just shifts it to the place where the delta function is. So here was that other property, if you multiply two functions in the time domain, the Fourier transform, don't forget the scaling factor, 1 on 2 pi times f of omega, which is convolved with g of omega. So again, straight from the Fourier transform lookup tables, uh, you don't need to do any mathematics to plot this. Uh, we know that we are now have to convolve these two functions. The g function is the Fourier transform of e to the j 10t, which is a delta. When you convolve something with a delta function, you take that function and you place it over where the delta function is. And so the delta function here is at 10, because omega naught here uh, that we had is 10. So the delta function appears at 10. So the con convolution means that our square, which is the Fourier transform of y, uh, our square is going to shift to be centered on 10. Okay, and the scaling, uh, the 2 pi here cancels this 2 pi, so the height equals 1. And let's think of one more and uh, slightly more complicated. Um, yt times cos 10t, but actually not that much more complicated. Because don't forget, cos of 10t equals a half e to the j 10t plus a half e to the minus j 10t. And you can straight away see that when you're multiplying y by this, it's exactly the same as the previous example, except you've got one of them at 10, which is exactly the same as the previous example, and one of them at minus 10. Okay, and they're multiplied by a half. So now you get a square function centered at 10 and a square function centered at minus 10 multiplied by one half. So these are how you can work out the Fourier transforms using properties from the tables and not needing to do any complicated mathematics involving all of the integrals. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos.